Welcome to the Python tutorial. Um, Python is a commonly used programming language uh, in 2022. However, it's actually quite an old language in terms of its history. Um, it's we're going to be using version 3.10. Um, but what I show, what I'll be showing you tonight, is applicable to any of version 3, which is the version of Python 3 3.0 or above. Um, which is what is recommended. Um, realistically, you should be using probably Python 3.6 or 3.7 or greater, but as you can see, this is a very new release. Okay, let's get out of the weeds. Okay, so the first thing to know is um, actually how to start Python. So I'm using Windows and I'm using the terminal. Um, but if you're using Mac or Linux, uh, it's actually the same thing. You should, once you've had Python installed, just type Python or Python 3 sometimes. You can actually check, whoops, that was not the right right command. Uh, Python dash dash version will tell you what the version is. So we've actually executed a command here, Python with an argument dash dash version. Okay. So we type Python, hit enter. Uh, which executes the command. Uh, we're now in what's called interactive mode, so you can see the triple arrows here. So interactive mode, think of it in a way as a bit like a calculator. Um, you can do simple equations and it will actually execute in as you, as you might expect. Um, if you want to obviously change the order of operations, you need to use parentheses. So at the moment, um, we have used Python like a calculator. So there's <laughs> nothing particularly special here that, that makes it any different from anything you might expect. Um, but it's important to know that in, in Python and, and most programming languages, they have the concept of types. That is, the type of this thing here is, is a number. The type of another thing is uh, actually like a string. I'll show you that in a moment. And there's even floating point types, which is say if you have uh, decimal places like 1.23, that, that's a decimal type. And I'll show you it. It's a float. As opposed to, say, a whole number, which is an int. Or if we do a type of a string. So a string is a collection of characters, um, basically a collection of characters. Uh, and then uh, we write it literally with, with the the quotes single or double quotes so that's a string so we're going going a bit down one rabbit hole here so we'll just step back a bit um, in terms of the very very basics so at the moment everything we've we've written here these are just existing by themselves they don't exist beyond the next line of code so what we should do first is create a variable so in this case we'll call it name and we'll do an assignment, so name equals. So this is not comparison. This is an assignment that is the equals. Let's call Bob, because I like Bob. So now we have a variable called name, and it actually points assigned to it, actually pointing to a string called Bob. So I'll just bring up a diagram for a moment, which I drew. So I'll Oops, I've got a duplicate here, delete that. So our name is actually pointing to a string. And this string sure. exists in memory somewhere. So that name is pointing to that string called Bob. So I just, this is an important concept to know about memory management. Uh, I won't go too deeply into it, but it's important to know this because you can actually assign two different variables, obviously with different names, to point to the same object. So sometimes people can get really confused by that. For example, uh, let's call it like name two because I'm not feeling creative. Fred. So name two is another variable. It's pointing to a different string. So in that case, it's a different object. But if we go name two equals name, here's, here's the freaky bit, okay? So name is name two. Yes, so they are actually pointing to the same thing. That is the type, the actual, we can find the ID of the object, which is 
somewhat equivalent to its memory location. So they're pointing to the same object. So every object in Python has an ID. So if the IDs are the same, you know the object is the same. This is not the same as comparing the equality of something. Uh, it's, it's literally, it is the same thing. So that we're getting a little bit deep here, but basically we have another like name two that's pointing to the same thing. So you can get really confused by that because it's like, hold on, we've got two things, but they're actually interacting on the one same object. So hey, what... hi, just me at the moment. I think um, Unamet dropped out, but yep. um, I'm seeing that the ID name and ID name two um, are the same string of numbers, but I don't yep. see where previously it would have been defined. Is it just uh, one that is dynamically assigned? Yeah, so I, <laughs> I don't want to go too much into the details of how the Python <laughs> virtual machine it's just works, me. but always okay. um, so we've got name as a variable here, and name two was initially assigned to Fred, but then we mm -hmm. re reassign name two to be name. So when Bob was created um. as an object, it, it's basically derived an ID, which I think is its memory location, but don't don't okay. quote me on that. So the fact that name and name two. Keep in mind these are variables, so that's, yeah, yeah. it's actually pointing to something. The thing that it's pointing to is this string here. Bob, is Bob. it Fred? Bob, yeah. So they're both pointing yeah. to Bob. And, and, and therefore you they have the same. Yeah, and then you can say name is name two. So basically is okay. is like a true, it's not, an, it's not a comparison, it's actually like an identity test. It basically checks the IDs. Name is name two. Okay, so it doesn't check based on the string or the text. Yeah, it's it actually, checks based on the ID. All yeah, right. we're we're getting really deep here, but it's, Sorry. it's <laughs> no, no, no. It's okay. It's it's like good. It's good. Basically, in this case, we've got name and name two pointing to the same thing. Mm -hmm. But if we we can reassign, uh, in fact, let's do that right now. We'll set set name two, Bob. So. We need to be really careful here because, mm, yes, so there's actually a bit of a funky thing under here, under the hood, because strings are, uh, are mutable in Python, as in when you when you actually change a string, it doesn't actually change what's inside it. It, it creates a new string. There's a string cache, so it remembers short strings. Uh, that's it... interesting because I, sorry, <laughs> I'm treating this like an interactive lesson. No, that's okay. I just... I just did what you did, and mm -hmm. my the ID for my name too, after changing it to Bob, is actually different from the previous IDs. Ooh, that's interesting. Very interesting. In this case, it doesn't matter because how, because yep. of how strings behave. Um, yep, yep. Yeah, but let's let me just close it. I'm gonna close it and run it again. So I've cleared all the variables. I just wanted to step back a bit. <clears throat> Um, there's some useful little functions in Python, which can tell you the variables in the current sort of scope, basically within either within your function or within, in this case, we're basically running at the global scope where there's no module or anything like that, but there's also a globals function as well. So when, when we have like a, a keyword uh, with parentheses like this, it's it's a function call. Um, so in this case, w we can see what's here. But if we say x equals one and y equals two, if we run locals again, we should actually see x and y in the locals. So you can you can use this as an interesting way to to see what's defined in the current sort of execution context. All right, I'll just close that for a sec. All right, where was I going with my tutorial? Okay, name, age, pocket money. Okay, that's it. So I'm just jogging my memory. Okay, so we've got name equals Bob. Um, and let's say age, call him 42. Pocket money equals, I don't know, $3. Oh, man, 75. poor bugger. Yeah, he's poor. <laughs> um, so we've now created three variables in the current, what I call the current scope. Um, so we've got the name is a string, Bob, age, he's 42, pocket money, $3.75. So let's just check the type. It's a string. 
type of age, it's an int, so it's a whole number, type pocket money. It's actually a float. Mm. So because we've actually written this lit as a as a literal throat a uh, literal float, sorry, that it's Python has created a float object. Um, it's interesting to note that um, strings and floats are not actually the same. So, sorry, ints and floats are not actually the same. Um, ints in Python, in Python 3, they're arbitrary size. They can be infinite, basically. Uh, whereas floating points, actually, I think they have a system limitation on the size of them. But if you need a uh, massive like floating points, you can use, there's another uh, thing you can import called like big decimal, which is actually better for proper money because it doesn't have issues with floating point mathematics. Anyway, we won't go down that, we won't go down that rabbit hole today. <laughs> with, um, with int, does it mm. take decimal points as well? Mm -mm. Ah, no. so int would be whole numbers then. Correct, correct. Negative um, and positive? Yes, so we don't have to, in, in Python, unless unless you specifically import like system types, uh, the int type is, is it's essentially, it can be signed or unsigned. So it can be positive or negative. Okay, thank you. In fact, let's just check for a second. Is there any max? Sometimes there's a max. Nope, bit length. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. So I <laughs> I just dug under the hood of this int thing. So actually let's look at on the actual instance of the object. So uh running dir like the dir function and passing in a something with it, basically an object because everything in python is an object it lets you actually look inside the object so there's a lot of these underscore things um basically these are internal to python um but they provide uh the functionality for di for different operations such as multiply um or for example let me just pick another one that's useful to know <laughs> the random uh, An attribute I can read there truncate I'm just, I'm just thinking of some useful ones well these underscore ones are basically for um, operations so they actually work out how it you know you've got age times age this uh, method here will actually be called so I'm getting a bit under the hood so okay, <laughs> don't so worry so... don't worry about how that works at the moment because it, it's it's Generally, yeah. you don't need to override these things, but you can. The most common one to override is actually the equality one. If you want to do custom object comparison, you under there's a function called EQ, but we won't get into that at the moment. Actually, okay, should, so I for should... my understanding, those underscores are basically like default functions assigned to an integer, for example. Yes, that's that's correct. Okay. That's correct. And the underscores. Uh, it's just a convention, which means it's like, it's, it's there, don't touch it unless you need to, but it, it doesn't Good mean you, you can't because you can. <laughs> okay. Keep it simple, man. This is like Python 101. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, 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 yeah, I'm realize you're asking all these good questions about what's happening. Um, it's also nice to know there's a built-in help. Um, so you can go like help int and, and actually okay. get some information on stuff. Um, or help, for example, there's a sum, there's a sum function, um, help on like float, for example, uh, help on stir. So yeah, it's like basic stuff, but it, it's kind of there and you can sometimes even go, let's, let's just have a look inside string for a second. So we can go help str dot upper and it will actually... <laughs> tell you okay it gives you a copy of the string converted to uppercase for example if we go name dot upper it'll return a new string right because name is pointing to bob and then running the upper is running that method on that actual like bob string object and giving us a, a new string which is bob okay okay right <laughs> right so help us okay, let me bring it back to mm. <laughs> for myself since mm -hmm. there's no one else here mm -hmm. so 
the uh, um, der string gives yep. us the functions that are default to that particular um, type. Um, and then, like, would you call string a type? Like, yeah. So string is a type. So type okay. of str is a type. <laughs> type of type okay. is a type. So um, <laughs> okay. it's it's kind of yeah. It it it's it's very orthogonal. Um, but you can also type der on an instance. So um, although we can't actually see the data in here, some types actually have what you call um, attributes, which are data set on the object, and you can look at them uh, within it. But basically, it's like looking in... So if you imagine an object like a box, typing dir on it basically shows you what's in the box. Like it shows you what buttons there are, for example, or what... Yeah. Um, and then the help break, um, open bracket yeah. string, for example, the upper gives us the specific um, help data on that function within that particular thing only. Uh, yes, yes. So, and, and you can even, if we get, if we define our own classes and stuff, which we can, um, it will also pick up the help string on those two, okay. which is kind All of right. handy. Let, let's come back to the actual lesson plan that you had, which is with Bob and his um, yes. $3 worth of pocket money. Yes, and there's also <laughs> one more basic type I wanted to introduce, which is items in pocket. Yes, okay. Ooh. List. Let me drag my my diagram down the bottom for a second. So, okay, we've got pocket money. So you can see in the local scope, we've got name, age, pocket money. Okay. Oh yeah, I should show dictionary as well, but we'll get to that. Okay. Um, items in pocket. So in Python, uh, this this kind of uh, like using the underscores is sort of the convention for variable names. It's called snake case. Um, you can't use what's called like kebab case. You can't use dashes. So you, so you can't say items in kebab pocket. Kebab case? Kebab, kebab, kebab case. Uh, because it will try and interpret that as items takeaway in takeaway pocket. So it'll, it'll get confused in terms of the, the parsing of what you're doing. Okay. Okay, let's make a new list. So lists begin is basically a literal as a literal is square brackets. Um, you can also use the list basically the list type called like that to create a new list. But we're gonna do it in line to make it nice. So he's got gum in his pocket, he's got a Mikey in his pocket, and I said he's got a bob in his pocket. What's something else he could have in his pocket? Maybe uh um, wallet, phone, like there's so many things. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not being very creative here. All right, gum, my key wallet. Okay, cool. Um, so if we run type on items in pocket, we basically we've got a list. Oh. So one thing to keep in mind is a list is a container. So the items in pocket, so I'll just zoom in. So the items in pocket is pointing to the list, which is a container, but it's a container which can, which points to other objects as well. So that's, that's a wallet, sorry. So bear in mind, you can have a list with different elements in the list, as in like the first, second or third element. Different elements in the list can, again, point to the same object. So be aware of that. There's no... There's no implicit protection that you can't point to the same object. So in terms of our list, we can there's a len function which uh, gives you... So the, there's a bunch of functions that Python has. They're called built-ins. And one of the handy ones is called len. So you can use that on, on essentially um, sequences of things, or like such as list is the sequence. Um, or an iter yeah, it is a sequence. So we, we know there's three items in the list. Um, we can't actually run sum on it, but we can do just just out of curiosity, we can do we can do sum on an inline list. So what we've done here is we've called the sum function, and we've actually passed in a list inline. And obviously, sum only kind of works for num numeric things. Uh, this could be a list of ints and floats. I think that would work as well. Let's just try that. I think it will be okay. Yeah. So it's it's pretty um, 
forgiving in terms of mixing of ints and floats. It will promote it to a float if there's a float inside. Otherwise, it'll be kept as an integer in terms of the result. All right. Um, if we want to add an item to the list, uh, all right, let's add a new thing. Phone. Phone is good. So it doesn't give us any feedback, but it's worked. Mm -hmm. And then if we run len on items in pocket, we've got four items. Okay. So how will we see what's in the pocket at this point? Fantastic question. So what this is called is basically uh, indexing into the list. So if we want to do it by um, index, yeah. And I'll show you how to loop through it in a sec. Um, for example, at index zero, we know gum. So unlike basic, like uh, old versions of basic used to index at one, but everything, every other sane language index is from zero. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have you know, I'm actually running two because I downloaded three earlier, but I didn't get around to installing yeah. it. But okay. It does start at zero for two. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Version yeah. Two. yeah. Yeah, sorry, basic. I mean, like the basic programming language, like the gotcha, you know, gotcha. that one. So. Hmm. Now, okay, so <laughs> there's one more I'm thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, go on. Watch what will happen if we index past the list, past the end of it. Okay, it'll get really grumpy. Mm. We'll get we'll get an error. Basically, we'll yep. get an index error. So that's an exception. It's grumpy at us because that doesn't exist. Mate, I see this so often in my own program, so I completely mm -hmm. get the grumpiness. So if I wanted to see everything at one go, rather than having to say, you know, okay. number zero yeah. and all that. So you can actually, you can actually, oh, just in, that. In, yeah, you can just reference it by name. So, um, <clears throat> it's important to know what you're seeing here because of how the interactive mode works is you're seeing a string representation of the list, like printed out to the terminal. Um, in fact, what's actually happening is it's doing this. It's running wrapper. Wrapper? What's it shot for? Oops, sorry. Ah, it actually gave me, it fixed up my, <laughs> my typo. What? That's oh, okay. cool. That's very smart. Okay. Um, so, wrapper is basically giving you the rep, the string representation of, uh, of an object. So, when we type, see how we're in interactive mode, right? We've got our little triple, triple um, arrows. We type items in pocket, hit enter. We've got this. Keep in mind that this is like a visual representation for our benefit. In terms of what this thing is, it's still just pointing to the list somewhere. It's just giving back the list. But if we actually want to know what's happening, it's running wrapper on it, which is giving us a string representation. Basically, if we if we, it's basically going print wrapper items in pocket. So we've we've gone two levels of functions here. So we've got wrapper which um, gives you back the string representation of, of an object. Then we're running print with basically this is the output, and that's going into print, and then we can run it, and it's coming out like that. For example, we could go... So, as we know, type x is str, so it's a string. We've captured it, basically. We've captured the output of this function, so in Python, when you run a function, usually this, if there's an output, you, it will it will come out of it. If there's no output, it returns none. So that's important to know. It, all functions will return something, even if they don't say return. They'll they'll return something or they'll return none. Um, that's important to know. And then in terms of like printing to the output, you know, we can say hello Bob. Oh, cool. So if I did print x print open bracket x close bracket now it gives me the four items correct so that's actually keep in mind that's no longer a list anymore that's actually a string as in it's a string a whole thing it's, it's a, a string, string representation wrapper is representation so it's a string representation oh. of this object that's a really important thing to know it's not the actual object but you because okay. python is kind of forgiving you can can actually print it out that way. Oh my god, okay. Yeah. So you can also do this, okay? So you can go items oops, in pocket, which gives you the string representation. So 
You might go, okay, why is there Repper and why is there Stir? So Repper is basically meant for programmers, giving like a kind of program programmer-friendly output, whereas Stir is like more user-centric. So you can override for custom objects, you can override the what what's presented in Repper and Stir conversion, string conversion. So that's useful to know down the line. Okay. Um, where were we? So we've got lists. Okay. Uh, we could do looping. We could loop over it. All right, let's do that. Since we're doing like printing and stuff and we've got a list. So in Python, if you want to iterate over a list, there's a really simple way to do it. You just go for, let's just call thing in items in pocket. So the pattern is for, and this is like a local variable, which is only accessible in, in the loop, because we're going to loop over it in container or sequence. So there's other things you could use here. Like we can create a range, 1 to 100 or something, but we're, in this case we're looping over the, the container for thing in items in pocket. Okay, so we hit enter. So one thing to know is Python is uh, white space dependent. So it doesn't use curly brackets. Uh, it uses like tabs or spaces. So I'm going to use four spaces or you can use two spaces, but I'll just use four spaces or tabs. Good. <laughs> Thing. All okay. right. Um, I'm going to just do this just so you can kind of see. So we're about to do a loop for thing in items in pocket. The the colon is essential. You put in a, either a tab or two spaces or four spaces. The, the main thing that Python gets grumpy about is if you're not consistent with this. So usually what we do these days is we use four spaces. So if we hit enter. So at the moment, okay, because we're in interactive mode, it doesn't know if we want to finish our loop or not. So we need to hit enter again. Okay, ah. so does this is this making sense here? So it's for thing in items in pocket print thing. So that okay. So there's another concept I've introduced here. So we've got our print function, right? These are two parameters to the function. So our function print here is taking the first parameter, which is a string called thing, and then it's the second parameter is actually taken taking in the variable which is pointing that thing is actually pointing to either gum my key wallet or phone so it's pointing to the individual string objects in that list so we're walking through the object list walking through the list sorry and each loop thing is pointing to a particular item so yeah this is a really handy way to walk through lists um, there's other ways to do it too We'll just do I this. have questions. Okay. Questions are good. First question is, mm. um, I don't see where we have defined what thing is. So how does Python know what we mean when we say thing outside um, of the string? Okay. So the Python like language knows about this pattern. So it parses your code, right? Okay. And that second, like that second part of this sort of for loop pattern is that's it's a new variable and it and it exists in in the loop each time the loop runs it will point to the the first item then the second item then the third item then the fourth item of the list so that this is basically part of the python programming language it knows about this and in fact you can do other crazy stuff too like you can unpack stuff as well I'm not sure if I want to get into that, but you can actually have multiple no. multiple stuff in here, like a common one. I'll show you a common one because you will see this. You can go for IDX. We can just call it element, okay? Okay. In, now, this part is a bit different because because there's two things here, it's going to expect like walking over a list of two things. So there's a type called a tuple, which is like a list that you can't change. It's expecting, because there's two things, to, it's unpacked to two things, um, it's uh, going to expect two things. So, idx element in, 
Now I've forgotten the function for it. Ah, it's enumerate. That's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Items in pocket. Yeah, I had a brain fart there. So, enumerate is another built-in function. And what it does is it returns for each like kind of item in the list, it returns the index of it and the actual item itself as a tuple. So it'll be sort of like zero and then, you know, like uh, gum as the first one. But it's unpacked because of this multiple assignment here. So this is like a special, another special pattern. We're getting kind of deep here. But anyway, let's just go index IDX, IDX. Element. 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 So. Index. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, we're kind of gone kind of semi, well, not beyond the basics here, but I just want to show you. Kind of like numbering, isn't it? So IDX in Python language is the index. Yeah. Period. And this has been a little bit confusing. So this enumerate doesn't actually give you back a list straight away it actually gives you back a kind of a iterator so we can make it an iterator is like an object which <clears throat> gives you the next thing in a sequence when you ask it so rather because you could imagine items in pocket could potentially be in infinite if it's another kind of iterator for example an iterator over a database so iterators allow you to walk through things which you don't necessarily know the length or you might have a kind of a dynamic length. But let's turn it into a concrete thing just to illustrate what's actually coming out of it. So when you run enumerate on a container or a sequence, as you can see, the first, it's obviously it's a list in its totality, but each walk, kind of each step, you're getting back the element index, sorry, the element index and the element itself and then element index, and then the next element, and so on and so forth. So this thing here with the, with the parentheses, that's called a tuple. So a tuple is, let's just call that type x is a tuple. So a tuple is like a fixed size list, and Python uses them a lot, and they're kind of elegant because um, many things, they don't necessarily have to be two elements. Uh, it could be five elements or whatever, but they don't change, they're not dynamic, they don't change, you can't add new things to them once they're created. And they're quite... They're not dynamic, so they're mm. static. They're static length, yep. Yep. And unlike a list, you can't reassign it, watch what happens. Yeah, it gets grumpy at us, so we can't override the first element, we can't change that element of a tuple. So a tuple is immutable. <clears throat> It can't oh, be changed. Okay. Okay. Yeah, mutable lists. So here's a, here's a bit of programming jargon. So a mutable thing is things that can be changed. You can mutate it. So a list is very immutable. Not only can you change the elements in the list. So for example, items. Let's actually show, show that. So we've got items in pocket. But let's say, okay, we, they throw away the gum. I don't know, let's put a knife or something. You know, it'll be a bit violent. So... Items in pocket is immutable, not only in terms of the length, but in terms of the actual contents. So we've actually changed knife. Whereas uh. our tuple here, um, I'll just call it TT. Let's just call it knife, phone, just, just an example. TT, we can't assign it. Um, sword, I don't know, we're getting violent. So it doesn't you work. Are with, man. Yeah, it doesn't work with the assignment, and you can't. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be a bit more friendly. Can't does has no. Basically, it doesn't support append. It doesn't have an append uh, kind of function or method on it. All okay, right. hang on a second. So <clears throat> why? Okay. Okay, I see that when we replaced um when we did items in pocket index zero equals knife mm. it replaces gum well um gum with knife yep why is it that when you did tt so making a tuple i suppose out of yep. knife and phone yep. why was that not possible is it it's because a tuple only um works for numbers no it's it's because a tuple as a its behavior is immutable so tuple you you cannot, oh, okay. cannot change its contents and you cannot change its length. 
Right. So once you've defined it, that's it. That's mm. yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And that's yep. why when we tried to do to do the TT thing, um, mm. it didn't work. Gotcha. Correct. Correct. Um, Thank you. Hee hee. I'll show you something interesting. So we've got locals. So we've we've added quite a few variables in our scope. So you can see obviously name Bob. Age 42, pocket money, items in their pockets. So there's our list. Um, see these curly brackets. So locals actually returns us a dictionary. And we've even got TT here. So um, we can actually go Dell TT to delete. <laughs> you don't actually end up using this very often, but you can use it. Um, and then that's that's completely removed that TT from existence. We, we cannot doesn't know about TT anymore. We've, we've deleted it, basically. Mm -hmm. That's what Dell is. Um, generally, we don't need to worry about manually deleting stuff in Python because it's it's a garbage collected system. Uh, that is, when you stop ref referencing something, it will get cleaned up. But uh, there is one case where Dell is useful, and that is removing stuff from a dictionary. So... Um, just trying to think of a nice example of a dictionary thing. Um, hmm. It's dictionaries words, or does it include numbers, floats, and all that jazz? That's a great question. So a dictionary is like a bag, and you have keys, which actually can be any object. So you could have keys, which could be strings. You could have keys, which could be um, integers. Or anything else and you can mix the keys it's it's really flexible and then the keys point to objects as well so um, no we can't use map because maps are built in uh, my dict equals so <laughs> we've created an empty dictionary <laughs> so dict is a dictionary um, you can also create so it's important to know um, in Python you can create kind of like an instance of a type just by calling the type with parentheses uh, or you can use the literal so the the python interpreter knows about this squiggly the yeah, curly brackets as a dictionary but we can also create it as a dict and um anyway it's empty uh in our case maybe what we'll do is we'll say bob right we'll just do it as a as a name to ages you know name to age so that's an empty dictionary so we've got name to age let's set a key so okay we've we again using the square bracket so this kind of indexing um pattern also works with dictionaries except that obviously unlike a list it doesn't have a defined kind of order you can have ordered dictionaries but by default there's no order to it um, but you actually could do this. You could have zero as a key. Let's not do that because that's going to be confusing. So say Bob is 42, um, and Alice, Alice is, uh, I don't know, 37. So we've got our dictionary here, which initially was empty. We've now set a key called Bob. So notice that this Bob actually doesn't really have anything, any relation to this other Bob except they're both a string, so it's important to know that. Um, the 42 is, is like the value. So a dictionary is a mapping of a key to a value. If we actually have a look at it, what's inside it now, you can see inside our dictionary we've got Bob and Alice as, as the key to a value, key to a value. So another interesting thing to do is actually to look up, for example, name to age. Um, Bob, we get back 42. So it's done a lookup. So dictionaries are really useful for these kind of lookups. Uh, if we use a key that doesn't exist, let's say Fred, we get a key error. So we get an error back. So obviously it's grumpy at us. Fred doesn't exist. There is a way to get a value using the get method. So this, this get method is a, is like, Try to get it, uh, otherwise return none or something back. So if you don't know, well, you don't necessarily know, and it can be useful to not have key error depending on your behavior. 
sometimes it is useful, sometimes it's not. But if we go dot get Fred, okay, it's actually given us back none, so it won't show it. But let's just do that. Type x is none, so x is none. True. Um, that's the way to look up in a list without blowing up, basically. Uh, look up in a dictionary without without it blowing up if the key doesn't exist. But there's also a nice way to walk over it. A um, dictionary. If we go name to age dot items, we actually get. Uh, ignore that type for a second. We basically get a list of the items, which is the key and the value as tuples. So we're looking at tuples again. You can oh, also. No. <laughs> <laughs> there's also a keys. Oops, so I, I made an error there. Um, <clears throat> there's also a keys method. So this okay. notation here of like um, variable dot something or other, this is called calling a method on that thing, on that variable. Obviously, it's actually working on the object, but we, in terminolo terminology wise, we say, okay, we're calling the keys method on name to age. Okay. Um, and that's giving us back, obviously, the dictionary keys. There's also values. Uh, for example, if we wanted to know how old everyone, how old, like the cumulative, na uh, cumulative age of everyone, we could just do sum name to age dot values which gives us obviously the sum of all the values in the dictionary. So let's look at the dictionary again. So in this case, it's 42 and 37 because it's nowhere, no, <coughs> nothing else. We can also use this items thing to actually walk through a dictionary because remember how we have that pattern for something, something in something? Yep. Uh, we can use the same deal because it's a two item tuple. We need to kind of capture it into two things, or we can capture it into one thing without unpacking it and we'd have to index into that, but let's not do that. Let's do, so the pattern for walking through dictionaries is for say KV, key value in name to age dot items, print key, K value V. So, um, <clears throat> it's important to know in Python that our print print is a function and it takes basically well not it's not entirely unlimited it can take up to like hundreds of arguments but generally you're probably not going to go that far um, so we've got a, a string and Python will just put a space in between when it kind of creates the actual string to print out and then we do it again run that loop. So we've done a loop here. I think now might be the time to do introduce actual comparisons because we've actually jumped ahead of doing like if statements and stuff and we've jumped onto loops. So maybe we'll step back and do a kind of a if something or other. Like for example, name is Bob, name equals uh, Fred. It's, it's false. So double equals is a comparison operator. Single equals is assignment. That's a major trip up. Major, okay. major trip up. <laughs> so if right now, if we had put just one equal, would that have changed the value of name yes. to Bob or to Fred yes. rather? Yes, yes, mm. it would. And we would have lost the old value. Every... So it's, mm. it's, it's a big boo-boo. Um, whereas name equals Bob, obviously it's true. So, for example, if name equals equals Fred, um, we can go, you know, hi, Fred, how's the family, something like that. Um, so, because our name isn't <laughs> Bob, this... Uh, right now is Bob, so it yeah, won't print. It won't print, exactly. Um, for example, but if we change it, just go up and, you know, hi, Bob. How's the family? Oops, my bad. Oops, I made a boo-boo there, but okay. That's so. all right. I, I, get the, I get the idea. Yeah. Right. So if the name, um, if the value matches what you are stating there, then it mm. prints that. Yep. And 
now is probably a good chance to show multi conditionals. So hold on a sec. Yeah. Hi Fred, how's the family? We've got Elif name equals uh Bob. Hey Bob, what's up? I'll just do this for a bit of variation. Else Ooh, yeah, let's do this. We'll go hi name. I haven't seen you before. Oh my god, is this how bots work? Uh, <laughs> kind of, I guess. <laughs> okay, so right now, because our value is Bob, Bob, it's printing Hey Bob. Yep, yep. So if our value is Fred, we'll get Hi Fred. If it's Bob, we'll get Hey Bob. Otherwise, for anything else, mm -hmm. that's like the final, it's like a catch all. You don't have to put it in. You mm -mm, could just go have course. if name equals equals Fred, or you could go if name, elif, da da da, elif, da da da, elif, da da da, and no else. But in this case, we've got the else as a, as a, as a catch all. Hi, you know, um, Jane or something, or Alice. I haven't seen mm -hmm. you before. In this case, it's executed just this. Hey, Bob, what's up? That's cool. it. Um, yeah. So that's the basics of that. I'm just wondering if we can... Do you have Visual Studio Code installed on your... Let me check. I do, amazingly. Okay, I might start jumping into that. All right, name equals... I don't know, Bob page equals 42. M pocket money... Um, I know, three point four two items in pocket equals I know my key phone wallet. Okay, so I'll just save that. So, got ah, uh, and yeah, um, Visual Studio Code is really nice because it'll tell you stuff, it'll tell you like what the type is. It's really smart like that. See, it knows it's a list. Um, you sometimes might see at the top of Python scripts, um, particularly on Linux systems, something like this. Use the bin env python, something like that. So this 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 line here is called the shebang line, and that's used on, on Linux or Unix systems where the system itself will read the first line of the file and determine the interpreter to use and then pass the whole file to that interpreter. Um, or Windows, it doesn't work like that. So, um, there's like file association based on the extension and stuff. Let's just get out of that. But we can go, so if you have a look at my terminal here in code, we've saved our file, hello.py. We've got our code in the file. Um, <clears throat> we're going to run Python with dash I. This is important when we're passing a file in because it will stop it from closing. For example, if we run it just Python hello.py, we don't get any output because there's no print. Oh. But <laughs> right. for our learning purposes, we're going to run Python with dash I. It keeps going. So there's no output, but the code has run. For example, we run name. Okay, we've got Bob there. Right. Got age. Okay, so it's set all those um, variables now. Yeah, so it's important to know it's basically it's executed the whole file. That everything's executed and then it's dropped us into interactive mode after in, after um, running the running the code in the file. Um <clears throat> uh, I might just introduce no, I won't at the moment. It's a bit confusing. Uh, there's some there's some funky stuff we can go if under under name. Yeah, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Let's just print. Okay, so we've got Bob now. Okay, so let me just perhaps try and understand mm. it. So what mm. you've run us through is setting the variables or setting values to keys. Um, uh, if... Well, that was the dictionary. So that's like name to age. That's that's this. That's the dictionary. Well. Yes, there's a dictionary, but also yeah. name equals Bob, for example. That yeah. would be what I um, would have described as assigning a value to a, a key. Uh, a, a, variable. a variable, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
Cool. And key and value are words that are used for dictionary. Yeah, for dictionaries. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, while I'm in a file like this, it's a lot easier to show you the other way of representing a dictionary. Is you can you can do it like you know like Bob. Forty two. <clears throat> or you can even do like this. You can even go name, age, right, and then Fred. So that's the key. The key is set from a variable, and the value is set from a variable. So it ends up pointing to that and that. Those oh. objects. Yeah. In okay. fact, I'm going to do that on a separate line so it's not so confusing, like so it's clearer. Uh, let me just set. Let me just type it in properly. So that's that's the dictionary. Obviously, it's empty. Then we're setting the dictionary with the key. Now, the key doesn't have to be a literal. That's a literal thing, as in something that we've typed in the code. It can actually be another variable. It can actually be an expression. It could, you could even do something like that, which is a bit silly when you think about it, but has uses elsewhere. But for now, just know that you can use uh, literals as the key or actually a variable as the key. And again, as the value through the assignment is also another variable. But keep in mind that it's not actually pointing to age, it's pointing to what age points to. That's a really important concept to know. It, it does not, it's not a double link. It's not like if you change age here, this dictionary will still point to the old value. That's really important to know. So it's pointing to the actual object, not the variable. It's just the value of the variable at the time of assignment gets passed in to, to point as the value for that key at the time of assignment. So when this line of code runs, the value of name is used as a key and the value of age is used as the value in the dictionary. That's a really important thing to know. It's not a, it's not a reference. Okay, so to paraphrase um, for my own understanding mm -hmm. then, is that we run this one right now, it will get Bob and age 42. Um, yep. And then if we change um, Bob's age to 43, it mm. will still remain 42 in the dictionary. Yeah. In fact, let's do that. That's a great, great, great thing to do. Let's get out of that for a second. Okay. So originally age was 42. As, as it executes sequentially, we've got age is 43. So age is 43. But mm. if we go name to age, if we look inside the dictionary... It's the old value because at that oh. at that point in time, mm -hmm. age was forty two. At that point in mm -hmm. time, so if we step through this in a sorry, let me just adjust my window. If we step through this in a debugger, you would actually be able to see at this line the value of age is forty two, and the value of name is Bob. But in this case, we've we've reassigned it. So a lot of um, debugging errors happen when people change the values of variables and don't appreciate the consequences in terms of the program flow. Um, this is where some other programming languages, they encourage uh, a mutable variable assignment. That is, variables never can, can never be reassigned to something else once you assign it in a scope. So at the moment, we're in global scope. I feel like it's now might be the time to introduce functions. So, before you do, um, globals and locals, how do you tell oh. when something is global and something is local? Okay, we need to introduce functions to show you that because because okay. in this file, global and local is the same. Gotcha. Carry on. Oops, what's going Global with an Globals. S. Locals. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, let's make something really dumb, which is like um, greet. It's just called person. Um, Python 3 has what's called type annotations. We won't use that at the moment, but you can kind of go like that, which is a hint. It's a hint only, which says that person is a stir. Maybe, maybe we will. And then uh, it doesn't return anything. So... Yeah, let's let's not do that for now, but just keep it. What's simple. that thing with the dash and then the ah, little arrow? You know, all right, fine. Let's explain it properly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
this is called a signature. So let me just get the base, the skeleton done. So this is called a function like signature on the first line. So def means you're defining a function. Greet is the name of the function. Um, in the parentheses is like the argument. Um, we won't put anything else in there. So that's it's only taking in one argument or one parameter, which is person. The colon means it's a hint only. It's not enforced at all, just to be aware. Person should be a string. It's a hint. Okay. The pointy arrow thingy here means the function itself returns nothing, returns none. As I mentioned before, um, all, Python, all functions in Python will return something or none. And where something could be any other type. But they will always return a value and that value can be none. Um, <clears throat> in this case, we're explicitly saying our function greet doesn't do anything. Um, if our function is printing to output, it does not necessarily need to return a value because output is kind of special. It goes to the screen. It's not not um, involved in the rest of the program flow. So I'm going to kind of simplify this just a little bit. Print. Um, hello, person. Um, how's it going? So that's that's our function at the most mm -hmm. basic thing. We've got a new thing and um, we've had to indent it. Okay, we're using, see, so you can see four spaces. Um, uh, I gotta go now. Bye. I'm just, <laughs> I just, yeah, hi, bye. Um, that's cold, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we won't we won't get input or anything here. The reason why I'm just doing this is just to show you how to do further lines of code within a function. Um, and locals, just just to show you, um, there'll be a new local in this scope. So let's just print it out locals, just for debugging, for debug purposes. Ah, I've put in a comment by the way. So comments begin with this little hash thingy. See how that begins with the hash? It's also treated with, as a comment by Python. It's a special thing for Unix systems, but... Hang on if, a second. So a hash is a comment, but if it's yeah. a hash and an exclamation mark, for Linux, for it Unix, is seen as For a... Unix, Unix systems, yes. For Unix systems. Because this thing is kind of read by the operating system itself, mm -hmm. and then it works out, okay this should be a program to run and then passes the whole file to that. So that's what the shebang line is. Like for example, if you have a bash script, oh, sorry, my mouse is a bit lousy. Um, hey, my you know, like, hi, right. Uh, actually, that's bad. Um, hi, um, <clears throat> same deal. Uh, you know, it should actually normally be hello.sh. Um, I haven't got bash set up on here, but same deal on a Unix system that this whole script, hello.sh, will be passed to bin bash, which is your bash thing. And that exists on Mac as well. We're going right. on a tangent. <laughs> Let's go but back to this. I just want to understand how <laughs> yeah. the, the, there's a difference between the hash and the hash exclamation mark. Okay. So hash exclamation mark is only for Unix. On all yeah. the systems, the hash is commenting out. In Python, yeah. So this is a comment. Okay. This is a comment. You can also have it at the end of the line, comment. And okay. there's even another form. <laughs> triple equal, uh, triple, triple quotes. This is Why? another, another, um, this is actually an object. As what? In, you can actually go like that. <laughs> you can have multi-line string literals. This is oh. another example of a really long string which spans over multiple lines. Haha. -ha. So, but <laughs> so if we print X now, would it print out everything? Uh, like yes. the whole block. Yep. 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 Oh. So if we don't assign it to anything, it's like you know, does a tr if a tree falls in the woods and nobody sees it, <laughs> did it happen? So actually, it does happen, but it has no effect. Gotcha. But you okay. might you might see this somewhere, mainly as what's called a doc string. I'll show you that. 
So this is a, let's just call example function, which greets the person. So, I mean, I did backticks here, but that has no actual relevant meaning. This is called a doc string. So the first line of a function, if it's like triple quotes, Python, let's run it. Let's see if I'm right. I think I am. Help. Greet. <gasps> ah, so it's read the doc string. It's read the signature and the doc string. Oh. Mm-hmm. I need to find that equivalent for my language because that would be so helpful. Mm. Okay, good to know. So that is uh, sort of like inline documentation. Correct, correct. And it can be multi-line too. So we can we can do this. Um, you know, sometimes you should go like, you know, person should be a string. But I mean... You know from the signature. I'm I'm just doing it just just for, for demo purposes. So it, it it knows it's smart enough to know that the the first kind of like multi. Um, so what multi what is contained is actually for documentation, and so it yep. will come up when you do yep. a help. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. The first, okay. The first kind of like um triple string triple quoted string is treated. Mm -hmm. It's called the doc string basically. Okay, thank you. In fact, you. let's see if this... Oops, not that. Um, not caps lock. La. Let's see if this works. I'm not sure if this is going to work, so we're going to find out. Um, it shouldn't, right? Ooh, it skipped that. Okay, so it's given precedence to that. If I take this out, let's see what happens. If you put that hash inside the... Ah, the no. So it's, yes. See, I like that term, seashells, yeah. So that, that, that would become part of the doc string. Ah, uh, yeah. okay. So it's not um, comments after all. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so it's actually special. It's a doc string, okay. Um, yeah, personally, because this is such a simple function, we'll just keep it as a single line. Mm -hmm. um, programming style-wise, um, you know, much like writing uh, a document, you want to use spacing. So the fact that, you know, we have spacing here aids the readability. It all executes the same. The white space in between the lines is, is more for the benefit of humans reading the code. So, you know, it's, it's like writing a book. You want beautiful writing. You want beautiful code to help other people understand your, your code or, or your book. Um, <clears throat> let's run greet. So what's our guy? We've got name here. Name Bob. Okay, greet. Uh, not Bob, name. Um, okay. So. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. So our locals, in fact, let's print the globals too, just to show. In a well-structured program, it's good <laughs> to avoid globals, mainly because um, the human mind has a limited capacity to, to hold on to things, like keep track of things. For me, it's like five things. I can't keep track of more than five things. So when you structure your program into functions and modules, you avoid globals as much as possible just to um, aid your... Keep things un tidy. Yeah, keep it tidy. And, and basically, in terms of what things can touch, it's it's better if it's more limited. Uh, I just mentioned on Note of Light style, you can... There's no kind of... You can line it up nice and stuff, you know, if you, if you really wanted okay. to. Just just to make it pretty, you know. Um, just quit this for a sec. So um, on Windows, I'm using Control-Z to get out. On Mac, you use Control-D. Control-D is like closing the standard input to the program. Um, on Windows, it's Control-Z. All right, so we'll run greet on name because we've got our greet function. And we've got name here. I'm just going to delete this just to clean it up a bit. Um, if we run great. So at the moment it hasn't actually run yet, but we hit enter. It's run. Ooh, so we've got a lot of stuff going on here. Um, locals is obviously just, there's only one local. And the local is the parameter person. Um, if we created new vars here, like um, blah, I'll just... Just putting in, oh, actually, let's do that below here. 
if we put this guy in here, bly equals 12, in this function. That's a local variable to the function. For so the once the function finishes, that it, variable it, would no longer exist? Correct. So let's let's actually do this in our code. Um, no, actually, we'll do it out of the code. Just, just, just because I like to keep, we'll keep all this stuff non-interactive. Okay, so blah, blah. So we see in our globals, we've got the whole globals. Also note, there's greet available in our globals, as in the function. The function greet, okay. Yeah. In fact, you can assign a variable to a function. Oh, no. <laughs> it can My be, God, is there, it can is be, there no limit, man? <laughs> yeah, it's all objects all the way down. Objects and variables all the way down, like turtles, right? Um, so <laughs> it can actually be really useful because you can have dynamic dispatch and... Um, you pass the variable in by, uh, sorry, pass the function in as a variable. And the thing that calls it doesn't need to know what the function is. It just calls it. It doesn't know what the concrete thing is. And that's really useful later on. Um, you can, yeah. I'm just trying to think of a good, well, there's a, there's a function called map um, or apply or something like that, which works over a list and then runs a function on each element. Um, <clears throat> hey, that might be a bit too advanced for today. Yeah, so, let's um, not go Let's down come that back point. to blah. So okay. you've added a blah 12 in it. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Let me let me just close this again because I can't remember when I added it. Okay, so <laughs> if we write globals okay. now, we've got greet. Is that global? Because we defined mm -hmm. it. We did def, def greet, mm -hmm. okay. Um, we've got our dictionary named age. If we now run greet on, uh, say, name, which is actually Bob, <clears throat> we've got our globals, which haven't changed. We've got two locals um. here. But if we're back outside of the function again, there is no person and no blah because we're out of the scope. The execution scope has left that. We're now, let's just call it outer scope. Could you this... run locals? Okay, so it's actually it's actually global scope. Um, <clears throat> now, when we say global scope, I'm actually slightly lying to you because it's global to the uh, module. <laughs> oh gosh! Now you're introducing modules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will have to tackle modules because it's it's important to know in terms of kind of like um, grouping stuff. Like how, where do all your MyPython libraries come from? Well, they're in modules. Um, <laughs> okay. So there's actually a built-in module. <laughs> oh a built dear lord. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I'm just thinking where to go. So we've got functions, we've got variables, just recapping for almost, almost for my own benefit now. Uh, variables, functions, we, um, we've done if statements, we've done uh, dictionaries, we've done function calls. Ah, yeah, let's 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 do another function actually. Just while we're on functions, let's just call it, um, <laughs> call it like I don't know, uh, make older, right? And then just age as an int, and just for the okay. sake of that, we're just gonna say um, new age equals age plus one, return mm -hmm. new age. So we've got a make older function. So if we m quit this and run it again uh, make older let's say age so we've got make older age becomes 43 so note that we have not reassigned age age is still 42 unless we go age equals make older age right so we pass it in it goes inside we get this new age object the uh, new age variable which is basically age plus one get that, return it. The thing that this variable points to is actually returned does not change what age points to unless we do an assignment ourselves. 
Likewise, uh, that at this case, age is now 42, uh, 43, sorry. Age is 42. If we do another line, age equals make older age, age 44? is now 44. Okay, you've got it. So you've worked okay. it out. This function has what we call no side effects. That is, it doesn't touch anything outside of itself. So that's good. Functions without side effects are good because it helps us reason about program flow. Um, so we've run that. If we actually run the program, <clears throat> if we have a look at age, it is now 44. So it's got to 44 because it's run all this code initially. It's 42. Then it becomes 43 because it's been modified. It's just reassigned from the value of make older. We've modified it basically. And then we've run it again and, and so on and so forth. So if we go make older. It's still going to, it's going to give us 45, but it hasn't reassigned it. But we could just, you know, and so on and so forth until, you know, it's got older. Mm, um. <laughs> okay. um, ooh, actually, here's a chance to do another kind of loop. So we have, we've done four loops. There's another kind of loop called a while loop. So you can say while age is less than 100. <laughs> oh my God. Poor age fella. equals, this is actually kind of dumb, but you know, like we don't even need a function for this. We could actually go age equals, you know, age plus one. But just for, just for the sake of example, this loop is going to keep running. Uh, important thing to know, with a while loop, the conditional is always checked, even always, as in before the loop runs the first time, it will check the conditional. So if that condition, if I, you know, like if that was zero, that's always going to be false. So this will never, ever run. So the conditional is always checked. Like um, a repeat function, isn't it? So yeah. it repeats. Yes, it's like repeat while blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Anything inside here, inside sorry, inside this level is, is 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 executed. So let's just run it again. Now we look at age. It's a hundred because it's it's looped through you know x number of times. Oh, that's quick. <laughs> yeah. Right. Is return the equivalent of the Windows echo? Say that again. Return. So. Yeah, return. So, uh, um, in one of the definitions earlier, you had return new age, and then yeah. it showed on the screen itself. Mm. Um, is that the equivalent of Windows um, Echo in terminal? Mm. I mean, in command prompt. So that that's kind of a bashism, as in when you, you know when you write a function in Bash, right? Often we mm -hmm. capture the output. Um, With an echo, yeah. Yeah, but, but then I'm... we go v equals, you know. Um, Something like that, but no, 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 no. It's it's not like echo. It doesn't print to the output. It's it's literally runs the function and it returns at this point because you can have multiple returns depending on your your branching, right? You can have if statements or while statements. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think I'm getting yeah. confused because when you ran that when that one ran earlier, mm. we did see um forty three and then forty four. So those yep. numbers actually came up. Oh, that was because I explicitly put the variable in our interactive interpreter. So I was like asking, what is the value of, like, just what's age? Age is 44 of that line, make order age, okay. So this is actually um, the behavior of interactive mode. Interactive mode will print the output of what's called an expression when you run it. So an expression could just be something like 1 plus 1. Right. Or it could be print. In this case, print returns nothing. <laughs> the reason why you see something is because print actually prints the output as well. But in our in our terms of our make older, it's doesn't print anything. But the interpreter, because it's in interactive mode, will print thirteen out. Okay. So what does return do then? Return uh, is basically signaling the function should stop and this is the output of the function. So the function will keep executing until you either return or it falls through the bottom. Like for example, if we took this out, we've got a bug basically because 
we're expecting it to return an int, actually to return nothing. And if we run it, it's it's gonna we're gonna have an error <laughs> because oh. age is now none. Type right. Age. Yeah, bug. Um. Okay. Yeah. So it needs that return to not error. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's only erroring because we've got the next time it runs, right? It's age has become none. And then you can see it's blown up here. Unsupported operand type plus, right? A plus operator for none type and int. Like there's no logical way you can add a none with an integer. So the, the system's like, bah, bah, I, I don't know what to do. Because um, it's... <laughs> The first time, like the first time it's ran, it's returned none because we didn't have a return statement. As in, it was like that. It fell through. It's basically like re saying return none. But if you have nothing, it's it's also like return none. Because not every function needs to return something. But in this case, we kind of need it to. When age gets assigned again, it's now none. But then when it gets run again in line 31, so we can control click on it, by the way, and it jumps to line 31. We say new age equals age plus one. So it'll be like none plus one uh, blows up. So that's why it's it's blown up the second time it ran. So it worked the first time wrongly. The second time it ran, it, it blew up because it's basically it's a type error. It's like, right I don't know what to do with these two distinct types. I don't know what to do with them. Yep, yep. Um, okay. We've, we've fixed the bug. Um Okay, while we're in a in a doing while loops, there's actually another thing we can mention is loop controls, and that also works with for loops. There's break and continue. So we can go if age equals twenty um, break. So we're kind of adding in some logic. Let's just do something kind of dumb like you're too young to age. Right. <laughs> if you're less than 20 years old, you're not going to age. Uh, um, yeah. In fact, yeah, yeah. and logically okay. to me, I would put it like that. But it depends. This is a contrived example. So <laughs> you're too young to age. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, this will never ever run if you get um, sort of like. Uh, Over like a hundred. Yeah, well, yeah, it? it won't run at all. Mm -hmm. I thought of another silly thing to do. If we're going to say if age modulus ten, as in if your age is divisible by ten. <laughs> oh God! Okay. It's like um, happy, you know, decade. <laughs> okay. <like> okay. <laughs> and then the, we'll print the age, something like that. All right, let's let's run this because this is this is going to be fun. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh man. I made a boo boo. He's done it every single time. Um. Hold why? on. Ah, there's a bug in my code. If a ah, yes, my fault, my fault, my fault. Okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, okay. <laughs> We're gonna go into a philosophical tangent about truthy and falsy values. So, <laughs> the reason okay. why it's run for every time is that age percent ten, as in age percent like let's say 20 percent 10 it's actually skipped all the decades we've got the inverse behavior because <laughs> the modulus oh, result so the modulus result is zero which is actually what we want um my fault is i haven't put it in here but if for example if you're 21 modulus 10 you obviously you get a remainder because uh -huh. this is a false value anything that's like empty string empty list uh, zero uh, is falsy, as in it's roughly equivalent to false. It's not is it's not actually false, but it, it, it in terms of comparison, if statements, it's false okay. enough. <laughs> it's not okay. And, and truthy is basically not false. <laughs> so because it's a number that's positive, uh, mm. yeah, zero or negative numbers are falsy. I think positive numbers are truthy. <laughs> strings that are not empty are truthy lists that are not empty are truthy um, and this is like programmer slang now <laughs> yeah truthy and falsy <laughs> so okay. let's, let's fix this up so we've got a, we've, we've got a bug we fixed our bug if age mm -hmm. modulus 10 
happy day game. All right, let's quit this because we need to reload our code. All uh, right, there we go. Okay. 50, 60, 70, 80. Now, we do have our age set, so they should be 100 now. Because, yeah, they've they've gone all the way through until they're 100. Finally, our while loop. Ah, oh, yeah, this is actually kind of handy. But um, <clears throat> our while loop has finished. Gotcha. Okay. Also, Lucas, i got to say, I have to hop off at 11.30 because mm. of my early start tomorrow with the volunteering. Okay. Just so you know. Cool, cool. Um, just so you know, this is being recorded. Um. <laughs> oh, no. I doxed you. <laughs> no, no. You didn't. You didn't. Because um, my name's in here as well. But, um, yeah. Well, there's only if people notice. But they will now. <laughs> yeah, I, I will edit it. Probably take out some of this conversation. But, um. Yep. Good I luck. Will, I will post it to YouTube. All right. Um, to YouTube? Yep. I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign any disclaimer. Uh, yeah, you missed the disclaimer at the start where <laughs> I said that I was going to record it. Oh, all because I was late. All right. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I think I did mention in the channel. Okay. Um, okay. Where are we at? Where are we at? So we've got six minutes. All right. What to, what to mention in six minutes? Maybe we'll be good in six minutes to just um, do a wrap up. Yeah. Uh, okay. So go over what we've been through before um, outside yeah. of Visual Studio and now this. Yeah. Maybe let's do a new one. Let's just call it wrap up. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> okay. Okay. So in, in this, uh, let's call it assignment, variable assignment. So in this tutorial so far, we've got variable assignment, like name equals, you know, Bob. Um, uh, yeah. Boss. Bob, you know, worker equals Fred, friend equals Alice. So we've got variable assignment. Um, these are strings, collections of letters. Ooh, I forgot to mention you can iterate through a string as well, like a list, but maybe that's for nope. another time. Well, nope. that's, that's for <laughs> next session now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep you on track. <laughs> yeah, you know. Boss age 42, so that's uh, integers, money, pocket money, uh, floats, floating point, um, dictionaries, also called map, maps, um, name to age equals dictionary. Um, we can actually do boss, you know, 42. We can do it like this as well, worker. Let's say 37, no, 55 years old. A friend, she's a bit younger. That's also a dictionary. Another form of initialization of a dictionary, as in we're creating a dictionary. Uh, loops, looping over a list. Oh, yes, we need to do a list. Items in pocket equals uh, keys, wallet. Looping over a list. Oh, list. Collection of objects. Uh, mutable. Keyword there. And thingy. Tuples. The tuple. Immutable. These are everywhere in Python. Important to know. Looping over a list, okay. <clears throat> um, for thing in items in pocket, print thing. Looping, oops, looping over a dictionary for K. Mm, now let's not call that name, age, in name to age. Oh, we got item, we got completion. Oh yeah, by the way, Visual Studio is really cool. It gives you completion of all the stuff. Yeah, it really helps, isn't it? Yeah, oh, wow. it totally does when you have complicated objects which you don't know very well, like other mm -hmm. types. Okay, um, print, um, name, name, age, oops, age, uh, what else did we have? Functions, 
reassignment. Yeah, we might just do a reassignment in the dictionary. Dictionary modification um, name to age um, Sally uh, 45, I know, 46. So that's a new item. You can even delete items name to age, say, you know, Fred removes from dictionary. Not uh, Fred, though. It will not. It, it was. It will. Uh, is there a Fred? There is a no, Fred. No, because we did. Yeah, so it'll, it'll take this out of the dictionary. It won't touch. So we Okay, so even. Okay, so the dictionary was pointing to worker, but the <clears> value of worker is actually Fred, so it. Yeah, so Fred is used as the key. So, okay. Yeah, the value of the um, variable is used as the key, not the so variable it itself, the value of the variable. That's oh, man. It. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At the time. Yeah. <laughs> At the time. Okay. Yeah, that's really important to know. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Also, you can, you know, go name to age dot get um, Macron. I don't know. Macron. I'm just making up something. I like his name. Macron. Am I feeling French? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Um, get without <laughs> errors. Uh, yeah. You could, you could even, like, <laughs> you can make it none or you can actually pass in a default. I think it's like default or something like that. We can just check this. Does that get? Okay, it's not helping us. Hmm. All right, it's not helping us. Um. Anyway, you can use dot get. Um. While we're on this, you can also go items in pocket dot append. Uh, phone. List modification. There's also there's other methods. We won't go into those at the moment. Um. Uh, indexing. Gives. Uh, keys items in pocket I'm just gonna make an error like will give us uh, gives throws exception because there's no 99 yeah I think. Mm -hmm. yeah I'm gonna comment this out because otherwise our code mm -hmm. won't run um function let's do a silly function functions yeah age So I was kind of lazy here. I've just done it all on one line. Make <laughs> honor. Um, this is a doc string which is visible via Python's help method, help function. For example, if we go <clears throat> help make older, shows the doc string on a function. Uh, object or even a module. Kind of exciting. Um, anything else? Anything else? Loops. Yeah, we've done a for loop. Oh, we haven't done a while loop. Okay. While loops. Age equals zero. While age is less than 100. Print age. A, so, because we haven't modified age, uh, this loop will be an infinite loop because there's there's no change to age. It just keep, yeah. yeah, make older age. Yeah. Now it will. Yeah. Work. Now, now, now it has a way of breaking out. Um, mm -hmm. Also, like what are they called? Loop uh, flow. You can go continue, which is kind of implicit, but you can write continue, or you can even go break. So that break's never going to get reached. So we actually could put it in here. It means the loop will only run once. But if you go if age I don't know, at some point you could go if name equals Fred. Yeah. Let's not do that. Let's no, just, no. Yeah. But basically <laughs> uh, this will if false. I'm just going to do something dumb. Like if, if true. <laughs> so we don't care. This will end the loop. This will stop the loop at this point 
no more iterations. Ah, this okay. will stop the loop at this point, but restart at the next iteration. So that's really important to know. Continue can be used as a flow control partway up a loop. Like if you have sections of code you want to run. You may want to end early, but keep going, keep looping through. So that's what continue is for. Break on the other hand is like stop, that's it. Get out, get out of the entire loop. No more loop iterations. Okay, that if true, what is it evaluating though? Um, a truthy thing. So if true, we'll always execute. Um, oh. If false, we'll never execute. Okay. Yeah, I've I've just put that in there as as, as a, an example. So in this case, examples. in this case, this will actually go. You know, age is zero. It will get one year older. We'll print age, so he'll be one. This will evaluate to true because if true is always true, it's going to stop the loop. So we don't even I get to here. See. That's actually this is actually dead code in the context of of that. So this continues okay. dead. That's okay for now because it. it it's an example. It's unreachable, yeah, but yeah. <clears throat> this loop will actually only ever run once. <laughs> okay. Or it may never run if, if the age is 100 or older. Um, yeah. Wow. I haven't even covered modules and stuff. Or making, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot more stuff to cover, but I think I covered some of the basics. Yeah, you did. And you also explained um, local and globals. Ah, yes, the scope. Yes, mm -hmm. good point, good point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can actually... Python actually doesn't let you reassign global variables from inside a function um, unless you mark it explicitly. For example... Boss, okay, so we've got boss, right? Just introduce one more concept: global uh, muted, mm, global protection. It's because it's like global. So def uh, new boss, right? Name. So we go global boss. So this allows us to actually change boss. If not, watch this. If we do boss equals name, it's going to get really grumpy at us. So let's get out of this. We're going to run wrap. Oh, sorry, we never actually ran new boss. Okay, new boss, um, Jimmy, right? Oops. Yep, no. Didn't oh, work. There we go. So it actually created a new local variable. So here's a, it's a gotcha. It's a gotcha. This is actually a bit of a, 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 a trap, right? So it's created a new local variable, which is aliasing the global called boss. Okay. Very dangerous. But if we want to modify oh. it, we can go global boss. This kind of programming practice, bad, bad. But there's occasionally <laughs> uses for it. Um, new boss. So okay, if we print boss, boss is Bob, right? We go new boss, uh, Jimmy. Jimmy's in town. Boss is now Jimmy. So we've okay. modified... It's a global scope. So it's like allows access. I should say uh, you can read globals from a function, but it allows, let's just say, allows modification of globals. So you can read but not modify normally. Yep. But by putting global in there, yep. you can now yep. modify it. So you can go, who okay. is the boss, right? Function doesn't yep. take anything. The boss is boss. Okay, boss is a global. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm not sure if Python 3 might have tightened up this. Let's see. Because there's some other keyword called non-local, but we won't go into that if it the boss is Bob. Well, so still be boss, it's referenced yeah. our global. The original. Yeah. 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 But global is global in terms of the module. We won't. This an under under module just so you no know. it's under sorry it's an under name is the module and it, main is kind of special let's yeah we won't go into that at the moment but <laughs> uh, yeah let's see the two functions okay name is main there's no doc there's no package yeah 
don't need to worry about loader, spec, don't need to worry about that. Built-ins, there's a built-ins module. Import built-ins to built-ins. So you can see all the built-ins stuff. So in Python, all everything, all these things here are basically available in the interpreter out of the box without having to import them. Notice we did use import. That's for bringing in modules. We won't cover modules at the moment, but these built-ins are always available by default. You don't have to import anything, but that that's the whole set. It's actually not that much, but you can see this float. This should be dict, yep. List, stir, sum, type. Yeah, so yeah, these are, yeah, there's, there's even, I think it's copyright. Yeah, let's not do that. It's really, it's a function that returns a copyright string. <laughs> uh, yeah. Duh. Well, yeah. I'm sure there's a reason for it. They stuck it in there. Mm -hmm. There's credits. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these, these are all, all the stuff that's built in, uh, like available by default in your scope like in just a Python file. Before any other imports happen, those things are always available. That's it. Gotcha. Yeah. So I'm not sure how much of this I remember, to be honest, but... Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, yeah, and there's max and min as well, which work on lists to find the maximum and minimum. What's seal link? Oh, well, not seal link. I saw something that looked like seal earlier. C-E-I-L? Uh, that is well there's round for rounding ceiling that's to do with um ceiling and floor is to do with floating point stuff okay gotcha. yeah we mm. no no <laughs> yeah nope it might be math dot ceiling anyway we, we, we won't cover that we don't need to cover that um i was just curious because um you know I mentioned that most scenarios Max would do, but ceiling must be there for a reason. So yeah, Max is um, Max is actually about like a list. Say if we had a list, it will give us the maximum, the value. It will return like the the largest, the highest, value. the yeah. largest value. Okay. Yeah, one, 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 one. You know, minus one should give us minus one. Sum is obviously summing it all up. Okay. Yeah, so it gives us some basic stuff out of the box. Yeah, max, min, gotcha. sum. Len gives you the length. You can also run len on a string, by the way, because a string is treated like like a list of characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Actually, you can add it into your wrap-up because you did cover length. Holy moly, you've actually covered quite a lot of ground here. Cool. Well, it's been a bit over an hour and a half, so that's cool. Cool. Uh, yes, M, 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 sort of built-in functions, len, uh, one, two, three, length of a list, len, bob, length of a string treated as a sequence, list, sort of like treated, yeah, M, sum, you know, sum up the elements of a list numeric. Yeah. Um, are there any others we did? I think, no, it's print, obviously. <laughs> print. Oh, yeah, print. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> very, world. Very you important. Want to yes. Uh, print to standard output. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, Python modules is a whole topic on itself because of how the import system works. So we won't cover that today. Yeah. 